Hi, welcome. I'm Kat Powers in the Somerville Media Center main studio with the candidates for mayor of Somerville. From left to right across your screen, we have Mary Cassessa, Bill Toro, Katiana Ballantyne, and Will Mba. We'll give them a more detailed introduction in just a moment. We'll be doing tonight's debate in three sections tonight. First, candidates will have two minutes to introduce themselves. Second, we'll have a round of questions that will give each candidate one minute to answer. Third, questions can ask each other questions. Questions are 30 seconds, answers are one minute. If a candidate gets invoked by another, I'll give that candidate a moment to respond as well. If we have time at the end, we'll have a minute closing from each candidate. This debate is being taped to air on Channel 3 and on SomervilleMedia.org. So, with the formalities out of the way, each candidate has a two-minute opening statement. May we start with Ms. Cassesso? Yes. Hello, Somerville. Thank you to everyone watching at home and to the Somerville Media Center for conducting this debate. I am Mary Cassesso, and I am honored and excited to run for the mayor of Somerville. My siblings and I were raised by a single mom in a three-family apartment in the nunnery grounds in East Somerville. Progressive movements have always been a part of my life thanks to my mother. Whether it was boycotting grapes for the United Farm Workers, blocking bulldozers raising homes to build I-93, or building community support for a neighborhood health center in East Somerville, I grew up advocating for health equity, social justice, and good government. In order to make ends meet, I started working at 14. I was the first in my family to graduate from college. I earned a master's degree in public administration with the intention of giving back to the community, and I have. I have had successful leadership roles in Jean Burns administration, Governor Dukakis in housing, and Governor Patrick in health and human services where I oversaw a $15 billion budget. I served as the Administrative Dean at the Harvard School of Dental Medicine, and my most recent role was the Chief Community Officer at Cambridge Health Alliance, which is a nonprofit public safety net hospital, the largest provider of care in Somerville. During the pandemic, I worked seven days a week to make sure the communities of Somerville, Medford, Malden, Chelsea, Revere, Everett, and Winthrop had testing. PPE, vaccinations, and other necessities, as did our staff. This work inspired me to run for mayor so I can serve more broadly and harness our collective kindness, innovation, and knowledge to provide affordable housing, health equity, end hunger, invest in education, and local businesses. We must address structural racism, climate justice, and more. I will be the mayor who listens and works to advance solutions to the issues facing our city. I have the experience we need for the future we want. Thank you. Mr. Toro. Hi, my name is William Billy Toro. I'm the publisher of the Somerville Medford News Weekly and Boston News Group. I've been in Somerville for over 60 years and I love this city. My wife's name is Marissa. She's a Brazilian and Portuguese immigrant. Um, I have two children of Italian descent. My, my, I'm a son of uh, Italian immigrants. And I have, um, I have grandchildren. I have um, two grandchildren, three grandchildren, I'm sorry. But I saw the, the reason I uh, wanted to run for mayor is I saw the direction the city was going. It was going in the wrong direction. I watched the city council and this administration sit on their hands, do nothing. I've seen them for the last seven years. I've seen the seniors, nothing being done for the seniors, nothing being done for the vets. Nothing being done for the sewage system, rats running ro rampant around the city, and corruption taking over the whole city. It had to go. I'm also the publisher of uh, Somerville, Stealing Somerville, Death of an Urban City, with a second book on the way. And it revealed all the, all the uh, corruption in the city, which has to go. So I'm hoping to become mayor of Somerville to make a better future for our people of Somerville. Thank you. Ms. Ballantyne. Thank you. I'm Katiana Ballantyne, and I'm running for mayor of Somerville. I'm optimistic about Somerville and everything that we can work on together. 
When I announced that I was running for mayor, I said then that our next mayor needs to have three key qualities. She needs to embody the cultures and values of Somerville. She needs to have an inclusive leadership style. And she needs to have the skills and experience to be our next chief executive of this dynamic city. And I believe I best bring those three qualities to the office of mayor. My immigrant experience has taught me to value differences. I was the first in my family to go to college, worked two jobs, took out loans to get a BA and an MBA. I've been working for 30 years. I started off in business in international supply chain management. And about a dozen years in, I moved into the nonprofit world. I work for an affordable housing developer in workforce development, trying to connect local people, our most vulnerable communities, to local jobs, giving them skills training and economic mobility, giving them the opportunity to start their own businesses in the green economy and energy efficiency and insulating contracting. In five years, I was executive director of a violence prevention nonprofit for at-risk girls. I've been seven and a half years on the city council, twice elected city council president. And in this ex professional and volunteering experience, I've learned that inclusive leadership works. It takes a little bit longer. It can get messy. But guess what? You get buy-in. You get shared purpose. And at the end of the day, you have the best results. I envision a Somerville which is inclusive, equitable, where we can all thrive together. And I hope I can earn your vote on September 14th. Thank you. Mr. Mba. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, everyone, for being here. My name is Will Mba. I'm one of the city councilors at large and candidate for mayor. I'm running for mayor of Somerville because for too long the needs of the most marginalized in our community have been ignored. Government is not working for them and because it is way too hard for people to live and raise their families here. I know exactly how this feels. I'm an immigrant from Cameroon and I know how it feels like you know, when you're working hard but barely getting by. My parents both died when I was a young boy and I was raised by my family members and in a foster home. In 2010, I was lucky enough to receive a visa to come to the United States and work. I quickly fell in love with some of them and was eager to participate in this community. This led to me working with organizations like East Somerville Main Street, which Board of Directors have served on. But when I came here, I saw that our government did not always work for you when you need it most. I experienced this firsthand when I tried to apply for mass health and I was denied. So many people in Somerville are facing similar experience, whether it's with education or housing, I've experienced these issues as well. I know what it feels like when you have to move every year due to rising rents. I know how issues of environmental justice are intertwined with issues of racial justice. There has been progress on some of these issues, but it has not happened quick enough. And I have said this multiple times, until we have a government that reflects the community that it is serving, how can we talk about issues of racial equity and environmental justice? That's why I'm running for mayor, to accelerate our community's progress on these issues and change the conversation. I have a track record that demonstrates what we can achieve if I'm elected mayor. On the city council, I led the effort to create the Office of Housing Stability because I know how it feels not to know where you're going to live. I led the effort to ban racial profiling and also to create the civilian oversight board for our police department because I knew it was a step towards justice. I've been there to tackle problems big and small whenever our neighbors have needed someone to fight for them. And you can be rest assured that I'll always put the needs of the residents first before the needs of developers. And that's why I'm the only candidate before you that have re openly rejected any money from any for-profit for developer. Right now, our most marginalized community members <coughs> do not have a seat at the table, but developers <coughs> and special interest from outside of our community. And I promise that if I'm elected mayor, I'm going to change that. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, candidates. I now have a round of questions. I'll ask the question and then ask each question, candidate to answer that question. To remind you, we have a timekeeper here in the studio who is visible to all of the, us, though not you at home. And uh, the first question is police, police reform, this month, the Somerville Police awarded two of its officers the Combat Cross for their actions after a fatal shooting. Here and across the nation, we're also seeing calls for defunding the police, reimagining police, and restricting what, what calls 
get an armed response. As mayor, the police chief reports to you, so what are you going to do with this department? Willem Ba. Thank you for that question. I really appreciate you know, having this conversation today. As the only person of color running you know, uh, for mayor of Somerville, I know exactly how this issue of police, uh, policing uh, it is in our community. I know what it feels like when my family is out and I'm feeling scared that they, ha they have to make it home. And I know that my number one job also as a mayor is public safety. So I'm committed to reimagine our police department to see how much the way they work. Oh, right now we know that policing is doing so much. A lot have been added on their plate. You know, so I believe in, in restructuring, rediverting money from the police department to stop the, stop the school to prison pipeline. This is what we will do. Hire more, you know, like social workers. Even police have told me that they are not so, there are things that they don't want to do. We need to diversify the police department so that it reflects the community that it is serving. That's what I'll do as mayor. All right. Ms. Valentine. Thank you. We've done a lot, and uh, there's more to do. We hired a racial social justice director. Uh, the city council uh, hosted uh, a community reimagining the police uh, a meeting. Uh, I've supported a civilian oversight uh, commission, which was first actually proposed 20 years ago with the Human Rights Commission. But we need to do more. We need to make sure that those who are most affected have a seat at the table in developing the policy that most affects them. I'm the only mayoral candidate, who, the one who's been listening, to communicate and effectively uh, ensure that those who are most affected are heard and have a seat at the, the table. Thank you. All right. Mr. Tarr. My first plans as mayor will be to put the chief of police job back in the civil service and out of the hands of political interference. No police chief should be a, a puppet for any mayor like we've witnessed for the past 18 years. I'm also going to increase their budget. I'm going to increase it and I'm going to be bringing it's an item called the Hub Initiative into the city, which is used currently by the Chelsea Police Department. And it's where if, the, if they get a call of a mentally disturbed person, alcoholic or drug person, something like that, instead of locking them up, ruining their career, ruining their, their life, giving them a criminal record and putting them back on the streets, the Hub Initiative will, will get them in, on a path to the society. It will it'll be a weekly program that we follow up on them. Instead of something going terribly wrong, it will go perfectly right. Give them people a chance to make themselves right. So as mayor, I will initiate that program. Thank you. Ms. Casessa. Thank you. Just last night, there was a shooting in the neighborhood that I grew up with in, in East Somerville. We know that it's a tough job policing in the city, and we know that there's a lot of trauma involved in policing. But we as well know that over the last many decades, we have defunded social service and stopped investing in social workers, psychologists, community peers who are very effective responding to the usual calls that come into police stations. We have a lot of mental health substance use disorders. There are calls related to domestic violence as well as unhoused people. And there are many comorbidities among this population. We have seen effective models out on the West Coast for 30 years. And most recently in Cambridge, the high program and one in Lynn, where we peer police and social workers. So that's the model I put forward for funding de-escalation, reducing trauma, and making certain there's accountability in the police department. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, housing. It costs more than $2,500 on average to rent a two-bedroom apartment in Somerville, which even at Somerville's living wage, $15 hourly, that means all your income will go to housing. Meanwhile, those who invest in property will get the most return for their investment in making luxury housing. So as mayor, what tools will you use to keep families in Somerville? Ms. Valentine. 
Uh, thank you for the uh, question. Affordability is a, is a huge issue in Somerville. So what kind of tools would I would use? I would use every tool possible. I would um, make sure that there is a renter's bill of rights, uh, which will explain uh, the tenant's right of first refusal, uh, counsel on the court, um, translation uh, information, and more. I would support uh, creating more housing by encouraging uh, the institutional master plan home rule petition, providing, um, expanding the 2,000 uh, homes. I would, um, for the COVID response, I would um, make sure that the moratorium deadline is extended. Um, I would use ARP funds where necessary. I'd increase collaboration and affordable housing with uh, our participants and uh, try to build more with the over, uh, affordable housing overlay Thank you. zoning. Thank you. Mr. Tarr. To get affordable housing for our tenants and residents, you have to start with making it affordable for our landlords and, and developers to make it affordable to build them these, these uh, affordable units. You have to start at the DPW inspectional services. Right now, it's a cat and mouse game to get a, get a permit, get a development, get a variance, get the thing going, get it inspected. By the time you finish everything from A to Z, you run into a massive cost overrun. When you get the massive cost overrun, it affects the developer, the contractor, the suppliers, the homeowner, and eventually the tenant. If we can eliminate that middleman, clear that clog in inspectional services, get these units built in record time with no cost overrun, that's how you get affordable units in Somerville. And that's how you keep them to stay affordable, and that's how you get your people to stay in Somerville. And hopefully, others will return back to Somerville. It will encourage developers, the right developers, to come into Somerville and build affordable housing. Thank you. All right, Ms. Cassesso. Thank you. This has been my number one issue since I was a child, and I explained my own lived experiences with affordable housing. I have served on the Affordable Housing Trust Fund for 30 years. In addition, I spent many years working for Governor Dukakis on affordable housing. As I have met many neighbors throughout the city, the number one issue I have heard about is affordable housing from all people, elders, artists, workforce housing, and so many low-income people moving along. And I've talked regionally about this issue because we have to work together as a team. So the three things I concentrate on is creating new affordable housing. We'll have American Rescue Fund. Um, we'll protect the existing housing, public housing, um, and we will continue to work on preserving expiring use projects. And let's reward small property owners who keep their rents below market level. Thank you so much. Mr. Mba. Thank you for that question. Again, this is a question that is personal to me. It's, uh, I know what it means to be moving around every year due to rising rent. So I'm personally invested in this. As far as you know, what we can do, extend the eviction moratorium, and then also increase the percentage of affordable housing units in, in large construction, fully fund and expand the Office of Housing Stability because this office has been helping uh, this involuntary displacement of our residents stay in their homes. Uh, this is something that I'm going to do to protect tenants with tenants bill of right, just like my colleague said, you know, the right to cancel, right to purchase, and, and, and rent control. That is something that is not often talked about, but if we really are serious to solve this housing crisis, we need to put that on the table, even if it's some improved version of some sort, because opponents of rent control, those are the same opponents who oppose increasing the minimum wage. So we need to, they believe in trickle-down economics. We need to do all we can to keep residents in their homes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So despite the pandemic in Somerville, we'll now have more openings than perhaps we've ever had in our history. New MBTA subway stops, new developments in Union Square, new buildings in Assembly Square, new bike lanes, and even the Powerhouse Rotary is becoming a roundabout. So, if the federal bipartisan infrastructure bill becomes law, and it was passed the Senate today at, this, at the time of this taping, how are you spending that money for Somerville, Mr. Tara? First of all, the bus lanes, I'm going to convert them all into a carpool lane, because that's what a bus lane is. A bus lane is a carpool lane. 
if you look at the traffic congestion that they've you that has been going on for the past year since you put the bus lane in there, it's ridiculous. Nobody wants to do business in Somerville. They have all avoid wherever there's a bus lane, especially where uh, Broadway is. No one wants to drive there. So. I'd be more comfortable myself, my wife, and my grandkids driving in my own car safe and sound instead of on a bus with 50 people coughing on my face. But I deserve to be in that carpool lane right before and in front of that bus to get traffic moving around. I want to do away with it completely if I have to, but we'll keep it as a carpool lane for now. Anyone with two or more people in a car are welcome to run in that lane. Anyone with one person in a car, stay in the left lane and make it more easy for people to get in and out of traffic. Thank you. And enjoy some of them. So to clarify, how are you going to spend the infrastructure bill money as it comes into Somerville? I'm going to do it with common sense. I'm going to do it with common sense. There was no need to turn uh, Powderhouse Rotary into a roundabout. What for? I have people, uh, you have uh, Doherty Funeral Home complaining about it. All the neighbors are complaining about it. The city council is not listening to their complaints. Okay. They don't want that. Thank you. Ms. Cassasso. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's true that we're undergoing seismic change in Somerville. When those five new Green Line stations open, 85% of the Somervillians will be within a half mile of a T station. So this gives us an opportunity to develop around the T stations with density that can give us the opportunity to increase affordable housing, to use land trust funds for affordable housing, and to make certain we are working with all the city agencies to improve the efficiency and accountability in getting this work done. The new innovative economy also gives us an opportunity for jobs for Somervillians in preference to Somervillians to get them better paying jobs and better benefits. But we have to listen to the residents, their voice counts, and we have an opportunity to respond to carbon neutrality in our developments. We have to do many things together. So how would you spend the money? I would spend the money on as much affordable housing with integrated services to bring community rooms, to bring health centers, to make certain that we have incentives so that we have job opportunities, job trainings in the new economy, and grants to help seed fund the land trust as part of the development and the uh, bringing forward the voice of the neighbors to make sure. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Ma. Thank you so much for that question. I think there's a lot I would do with that money. Uh, it's uh, like you mentioned, this is Union Square. We are the epicenter of development in, you know, New England. I can say that. And so we need to improve our sewer system. That is something that that money can be used for, retrofit our buildings, even bring the Green New Deal, like, you know, help prepare our city for the impact of climate change, which people is not often talked about. So this is something that will do improve our, our, our transportation infrastructure by building protected bike lanes, you know, try to, like, create a, a, uh, uh, an, a, a city where people can be less dependent on cars, you know, so this is something that I look forward to doing. So we, we can all, like there's a lot we can do. If you're a senior here, yeah, you're a person with disability, you're almost invisible. So how do we create our city streets safe for people with disabilities so that we can all enjoy the same community as one community and not just for the rich? All right, thank you for answering the question. Sure. Ms. Valentine. Uh, thank you. So I would use the ARPA funds uh, for those who are most affected. Um, the state of emergency of women is a resolution I put in. I also put in a guaranteed income program. And uh, so I think that some of the funds should go there. It should go to child care. It should go to broadband internet. It should go to um, making uh, uh, our infrastructure uh, ADA compliant. Um, we should appropriate where necessary for the water and sewer. Um, and we should uh, consider also doing a uh, universal after, uh, after school and a universal preschool. Um, so the parents who've been most affected during the COVID actually um, get the relief that they need. All right, thank you. So as mayor, when you're elected, You'll sit on the school committee. 
There's been a lot of focus on the beautiful new high school building, but COVID has turned the education routines upside down. So if the fight song is Somerville leads the way, what is your big shot, your first big shot at education? Ms. Cassessa. I, I have to comment on the beauty of the high school and agree with you. I got an early tour and Cambridge Health Alliance has teen health centers in all of the high schools where we provide service to deal with mental health, substance use treatment issues, et cetera. But I think we need to make certain that we start with the young, universal pre-K that is not only available to everyone, but free transportation is needed to get people there. And then at the other end, at the high school, let's make certain that the new innovative economy contributes to internships and the technical end, but also in the academic end, and have academic um, credits towards college from the um, ac higher ed institutions in Somerville, and finally, to have parents and other adults have job training to get better paying jobs with the career path. Thank you. Mr. Mba. Thank you for that question. As a parent of two young kids, you know, one in the public school, I will say that one of the things that we should do, you know, is to invest in universal pre-K, like uh, Mary mentioned, because we are, if you look at the profile of the city, we are not building it for families anymore. Because we are building this high school that, you know, we are praising, but where are the families are going to come here? So we need to create the structures and tools. Because I've said it multiple times, if you build a city for families, families will come here. If you build a city for cars, cars will come here. If you build a city for, for bikes, bikes will come. So how do we, you know, also uh, st stop the school to prison pipeline by redirecting money from the police department into schools, like hiring more guidance counselors, more teachers, more, you know, like teachers of diversify the school department and have and also make sure that students have a voice at the table because I don't see students being represented in decisions that affect them. Thank you. All right, uh, Ms. Ballantyne. Thank you. So 70% of our uh, school population, the children in our schools, are children of color who come from low-income families. So one of the biggest things we can do for our children and for the equity uh, values that we talk about in Somerville is, you know, as you know, a few of my uh, colleagues have mentioned here, is to have universal pre-K. We have to make sure that uh, there is success in life once they, they graduate, and universal pre-K is one of those things. For families, we need to make sure that the kids have a safe place to go, and having universal after-school program is an opportunity, and also uh, uh, is an opportunity for enrichment. And as the children get closer to high school, we need to be able to give them interns co-op opportunities and the opportunity to work towards a associate degree at the local community college so they have a better foot uh, in the world once they graduate. Thank you Thank very you. much. Mr. Taro. You know, we're talking about the high school. It's a beautiful building. We're talking about transportation there. We're talking about child care and everything in there. But where's everybody been for seven years? Where have they been? Where were they in the design of this building? That building is made for 1,700 students, 1,700 and 350 teachers. Where do they park? It was built with zero parking, zero. Who does that? Where are these kids supposed to park? Where is the teacher supposed to park during a snowstorm or coming in from their home? If they're going to be circling in the rain for an hour, they're going to come back into that school. They're going to be one pissed off teacher. And who can they take it out on our kids? I believe the first thing I would do, I would clear the front grassland over there, put 275 parking spaces in there, and I would have Cambridge Health Alliance pay for it and Tufts University pay for it. Who does that? Who does that? These people had seven years to think about this, to design this building. That's why some of it is broken. This is just the school. I can go on to every city building in the city. Some of it is broken. People have been sitting on their hands for seven years. I'm here to fix it. Thank All you. All right. So thank you. So next, we'll go on to the next section of our forum, which is candidates get to ask questions of each other. So uh, to start, Mary Cassesso, you have 30 seconds to ask a question of any candidate you want and that candidate gets one minute to answer. And I'm going to say, if you invoke the name of another candidate, I will, of course, give him or her the opportunity to respond. Thank you. 
Katiana, the city of Somerville's budget is approximately 300 million with approximately 2,000 employees. Can you give us an example of a specific leadership position you manage with a budget that size and the staff that size? Uh, thank you for the question. So my uh, professional experience, I worked for a half billion dollar corporation where I managed um, product uh, anywhere from 150 million to 350 million, negotiated uh, international contracts uh, across uh, the world, and um, managed um, hundreds of people in the process. All right, Bill Toro. Uh, my question is to Mary Cassesso and Kajana Ballantyne. All right. If it, elected, may I? They will just each both get a minute to respond. Okay. And okay. Can, can I respond after? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Let's do it. It goes out to Mary Cassesso and Kajana Valentine. As mayor, how would you handle ongoing development projects that both of your husbands are involved in for the past seven years that are involved with Mayor Curta Tony as a silent partner? How would you uh, distinguish, how would you separate yourself from them and what would you do to handle it to make sure nothing wrong happens? Billy, let me set the record straight. Okay. My husband has done one development project in Somerville 13 years ago of an empty school building that was an eyesore down on Beacon Street. The project was at the Durrell School and it is a beautiful project that won awards and has a community garden. My husband further has said he would not be involved in any projects in the city of Somerville. And finally, I am the candidate for mayor. But one last comment, and he has never been involved in any legal battles as you describe. Thank you. Ms. Valentine. That's factually incorrect. All right. Let me refresh both your memories. You said your husband's never been involved in any legal battle. Here's one right here from the bowling alley. You, and you said your husband's in, uh, incorrect. He has a six, $6.5 million deal from your husband, Richard Nielsen. And he has a $35 million deal with your husband, Peter Miller. Right. And on top of it, an $80 we're, million we're gonna, deal. We're going to cut you right off there yeah. because this is something that we can't verify in this particular No, but form. I know. I'm going to post these online tonight. All right. So, Ms. Valentine, you have uh, 30 seconds to ask a question. Where would you like to go? Uh, Mary, <laughs> you gave $5,500 to a Republican governor and lieutenant governor and contributed against their opponent, Democratic opponents. How does supporting a Republican administration against Democrats not totally contradict your claims to have progressive values? Thank you. First off, I have worked on mental health and substance use treatment for more than seven years. And as we know, and was reported on the front page of the globe, we continue to see situations where the needs go up. There was discussion of a young girl who stayed 30 days in um, boarding in an emergency room because there was no place for her to go. I have worked extensively with our state delegation, advancing a lot of legislation, but I reach across the aisle as a senior leader to make certain and we were successful that we got expanded funds for mental health and substance use treatment. Mr. Mbaugh, would you like to ask a question of your candidate, fellow candidates? Wow, I'll go with Billy. Bring it on. Uh, Mr. Toro, I know you, you, know, you, you have you interact with the seniors, you care about the seniors. I just wanted to, do, I was curious to know about like, especially with the uh, 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 incoming of climate change and heat wave that is coming. I just wanted to know what plan you have for the environment to be able to like take care of the seniors. What I would like to do, I would start with Highland Gardens. Take for instance, that building, I was there the other night for a pizza and ice cream social. I have 15 tenants 
15 residents of that place on my website right now complaining in the camera about the quality of air in there, quality of life. There's no air quality throughout the whole building. No heating system, no air conditioning system. I'd begin with that. I'd start doing each unit over one by one. As a unit's done over, I'd bring them seniors into that building and, and um, I'd bring them seniors into the building and start on the other one. When the other one's done, bring a senior in that building, start on another one. But you've been on the city council along with Casiana Ballantyne for seven years. You've done nothing about it. Now you're talking about tonight. Thank so you for bringing it up, Dale. I want to clarify, though. The question was about the coming client ch uh, uh, climate change. Do I yeah. understand that correctly? Yeah. 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 Where are you on climate change? I'm for climate change. I'm for bringing green stuff into Somerville, too. But air quality, air conditioning, and uh, just living in the, in the buildings alone have to be discussed first before we can go everything green. The, we have seniors living in horrible conditions. We should fix that. All right. So uh, that was interesting. Let's go for another round. Yep. Mary Cassesso, do you have a question for another candidate? I do. Um, well, I'll ask you the question I asked Katiana. Um, $300 million Somerville budget, almost 2,000 employees. Can you give some examples of your spe specific leadership skill in a, managing a budget this size and um, personnel numbers that large? Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, I always, you know, like really see myself when you think about like management in terms of mayoral administration, I see a, a mayor as, yes, management is good, which I have. It, I manage a, a few million dollars at my state job in administering grants to municipality. But I think that every time, you know, a candidate of color is on the ballot, there's always this management experience and executive experience that is being asked. When Obama ran for, for president, what, experience, what management experience did he have? He was just an, a law professor and, and, and a community activist. Ma Nelson Mandela was also, you know, a community activist. If we need, if we need management and executive to run this, this community, go bring Charlie Baker or Mitt Romney to run it. I don't need Jeb Bezos to run Somerville. We need somebody with a good heart. It will have a progressive vision and then hire competent and diverse staff to execute that vision. All right. Mr. Tarr, do you have a question? No. Okay. Ms. Ballantyne. Thank you. So this is for, for Billy. So in 2016, you endorsed Donald Trump and bragged about his paper was the first to, endo uh, that your paper was the first to uh, endorse him. Uh, yet he received 10% of the vote here in Somerville. As recently as 2019, you bragged about supporting him. How can you be mayor when your personal judgment is so out of touch with 90% of the voters. Well, you can't compare me to Donald Trump. He has more hair than me, number one. In 2016, I did endorse him. I also endorsed Joe Cernatoni. That's why they put pencil, erases on pencils. I also endorsed you as well. I remember going to fire and endorsed you, but that was a mistake as well, Caggiana. After I found out everything that was going on, I endorsed you and I pulled out. Same thing with Joe Cernatoni. Then I wrote my book, Stealing Some of Them, to prove all the corruption, and I've never been sued on it because you know, maybe you don't want to be put on the witness stand. That's why. But the Donald Trump thing is, I was a lifelong Democrat, and I watched them feel their, their, their party miserably. Then I became a Republican. I witnessed the same. They feel their party miserably. Now I'm an independent. I'm William Toro running for mayor of Somerville as an independent. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, Will and Ba, you have 30 seconds to ask a question. Thank you. And this question I will ask to, you know, uh, Katerina Ballantyne, Billy Toro, and Mary Cassesso. Ever since I ran for office for my first campaign, I have proudly rejected money from any for-profit developers, and I also proudly supported rent control. Why, you know, have you not, why, you, why haven't you also, like, proudly rejected developer money, and why are you not supporting rent control? As the only two to keep working uh, uh, families in Somerville. Can I answer that? Uh, no, no, I mentioned, you know, just... Ms. Valentine first. Okay. Uh, you're incorrect. It's documented. I am not taking any developer money. And uh, I, I, uh, it's publicly posted. And I'm sorry, what was the second rent quote? Rent control. I probably, I have probably supported rent control. I haven't... And I looked it's at on you. my website. Okay. I do not, I do not endorse rent control. I'm strictly against it. Because all that will do is it's going to bounce back and make it worse for the tenant because the, the, the landlord is going to raise the rights and it's going to make it worse for the tenant. And as far as, um, as far as, um, 
not the question. Developer. developer <laughs> as far as developers go, why single them out? You're talking about we want affordable housing here. Who's going to build them? You need developers to build the buildings. But you, you know something? You can't extort them when they're doing their jobs. You can't extort them. You can't ask them for money. You can't control them. You can't get a piece of it. You can let them do the job from A to Z, get it done, get it done in record time with no over, cost overrun. That's why. All right? Developer, the developers should not be singled out. I tell you that right now, Will. They are here to build affordable housing. Let them build affordable housing. Okay, thank you. Ms. Casasso. Okay, thank you. Um, I have pledged that I would not accept money from developers that are doing business in Somerville and have proposed projects in Somerville. In order to manage a community, you need to work with all business members and all residents of the city. I think it would be artificial to, to think that these are individuals we wouldn't live, be working with and it's a key component for us to expand the tax base so that we can have that money along with opera funds to invest in issues like affordable housing, safer streets, cleaner transportation. Finally, because I didn't say it earlier, I will. I am a lifelong Democrat and have only voted Democrat and always progressive. Thank you. Oh, rent stabilization. Sorry, Will. I am supportive. Of course, we know that it requires legislation at the state level. And we know that the mayor of Somerville has advocated for that in the past. I support looking at the rent stabilization account, but all of the details aren't completely known at this point. But affordable housing is the biggest issue in this city, and we need to resolve keeping our population here in the diversity and the vibrancy we all enjoy. So we do have some time. So I do have a question that I did, I, a subject that I said I would not bring up for you yet, which is, describe Somerville in three words. Will and Bob. In three words, yeah. compassionate, it's uh, progressive, humanity. All right. Kenyana Valentine. Uh, thank you. So I was going to say progressive, uh, community, uh, support. Bill Toro. Greatest place on earth. Ooh. All right. Mary Cassessa. We are vibrant. We are diverse. We are committed to neighborhoods and progressive values. Fantastic. Well, we have time for closing statements. So, uh, you know, same rules that we've been using before. Um, we'll give you the ability to speak for, uh, we actually have two minutes left So um, for, for each candidate. So um, if we could start with you, Willem Ba, do you have uh, closing remarks? Sure. Uh, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity for me to be here standing with you all. It's really humbling for somebody who came, you know, from Cameroon and fell in love with this community, moved to Somerville without knowing anybody, only became a citizen in 2015, and then now has been elected twice on the city council and now running for mayor. I am running to give back to this great community, this community that has given me so much. It will be the honor of my lifetime to serve you as your next mayor of this great city. Thank you for the opportunity. Kariana Ballantyne. Thank you. Thank you also for this evening. As I've said, I believe there are three key qualities that our next mayor needs to have. She needs to embody the cultures and values of Somerville. She needs to have an inclusive leadership style, and she needs to have the skills and experience to be our next chief executive. I believe I best represent those uh, key qualities for the office of mayor. We've talked a lot about uh, many issues and important issues to Somerville on affordability, the environment, a uh, little bit about uh, parking and transportation, and I see us tackling those issues together. Uh, and building a Somerville where we can all thrive together, just no exceptions. I hope you share in my vision. I ask for your support. I would honor to be. I would be honored to be your next mayor. Um, thank you, Bill Toro. I'm honored to be here tonight. I'm honored to be in this race, and I love this city. I love the city more than you can imagine. I want to be known as a mayor 
who's going to be mayor for all, and I want to do the best I can for everybody in the city. I want to correct all the problems. Some of it was broken. I want to fix it. And I, more important, I want to also be known as the only mayoral candidate on this stage tonight that doesn't need a script that was pre-written to read from. I'm talking from my heart. Mary Cassesso. Well, from my heart, I am very proud of the people of Somerville, their commitment, their care, and concern for the city. I have canvassed many neighborhoods, and folks have shared their concerns and their priorities. I will be that mayor that listens to the concerns and priorities, and the number one concern we've talked about tonight is affordable housing. But public health, health equity, climate justice, and so many other social factors are in need of being addressed in Somerville. 80 to 90 percent of our health is what is happening in our community. And I have that public health and equity lens and the lived experiences to respond to that. Led by my values of inclusivity, welcomeness, kindness, and integrity. I have deep relationships Thank you for listening. I would be honored to receive your vote on September 14th. Fantastic. Well, this has been a debate of your mayoral candidates for, for those who are looking to lead Somerville. A few notes. Wednesday, August 25th, 2021 is the last day to register and vote for Somerville if you'd like to vote in the preliminary election, which has these four candidates on the ballot. The preliminary election is September 14. From there, the top two winners of that election will face each other in the final election on Tuesday, November 2, 2021. I want to thank the staff and especially the volunteers of the Somerville Media Center who have made tonight possible. And thank, thank you. you candidates for stepping forward to offer your ideas for our city. Thank you. I am Kat Powers from the Somerville Media Center, and please remember to vote.